Hi everyone, this is Joe from JoeColantonio.com. This is the first video in my series, Learning to Program with QTP. Today we're going to take a look at three basic concepts, setting up QTP, terminology, and some good practices to follow when coding in QTP. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go into QTP and go into the expert view. And you can go into expert view two ways. Either you can click on the expert view tab that's to the right of the keyword view or you can just go to view and click on expert view the second setting you want to make is go into tools view options and under the general tab you want to make sure you have show line numbers make sure that that's selected click OK what this is going to do on the left hand side it's going to put line numbers and this is really going to help when you have a long script and you need to debug it for those of you who don't know, Test and Quick Test Professional are coded using VBScript. Uh, VBScript is a programming language that was created by Microsoft, and it's basically a scaled down version of Visual Basic. The only way to really learn a new programming language like VBScript is to start using it. So let's just go in and, and write a line of code in QTP and take it from there. So I'm just going to type in message box, type in hello world. Okay, and I'm going to run it just to make sure that the syntax is correct and QTP doesn't throw any errors. So it worked. Well, basically what it does is it just brings up a message box and it displays the text that we just entered. So a line of code in QTP is called a statement. And a statement is a command that performs an action. So when we write this function in QTP, it shows, up, it shows us a list of arguments for this function. And you can see the name of the argument and whether it's optional or not. And so basically for message box, it's telling us the only required argument is prompt and everything else is optional. So when we typed in hello world, we were just filling in that very first argument for prompt. So you can also create your own function. So when you're creating an automated test script, uh, you may find yourself writing the same lines of code over and over again. And if you're, you're lazy like me, you don't want to keep writing the same lines of code. So those lines of code probably should be made into a function. And so a function just makes it more reusable and more maintainable. So we wrote our first line of code. We, we went over functions. Another concept you want to be aware of is something called objects. And when creating automated scripts or QTP, most of the time you're dealing with objects. And these objects usually are like a browser or a window. So in QTP, uh, data that describes an object is usually called a property. And so if we pulled up what QTP considers an object, for example, a window. So we're going to use Notepad. And if we pull up the spy, and so the object spy allows you to spy on objects. And when you spy on an object, it's going to reveal to you all the properties that are associated with that object. So when you're trying to interact with an object through QTP, QTP needs to know how to identify this object. And the way it does that is by using properties. And so to get these properties, you would use the object spy, spy on the object. And so it gives you all the different properties that can be used to help identify this object. So the object spy not only shows you the properties that are available, but it also shows you the different methods that you can perform on that object. Let's take a quick example. So what I want to do is I want to I want QTP to type in this this uh, notepad object. So I'm going to write a quick line of code that does that to give you a better idea on how this works. So I'm going to type in window. And so window is saying I want to use an object that's a of class window, which is this notepad, and I know that I know that because I use the object spy when I spy on it and tells me that the class name or the class type is window. And so I need to use one of these properties to help QTP identify it. So I'm just going to use regexpress win title. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm just going to say that equals notepad. So all this information I got I I got from the object spy. So another thing to be aware of whenever you're dealing with an object when you use dot, dot is used to access an object's properties or methods. So when you do dot, uh, QTP pops up this helpful uh, information for you. So it tells you what's available for this particular object. So what I want to do is I want to type. So I notice that there is a type. 
you select the type method. And notice it's also telling you the argument that's required and it's required in the keyboard input. So what I want to input from the keyboard is the text demo Joe. So let's run it. Cool. And so you can see that QTP found a, a window object that has a title called Notepad and it typed demo Joe into it. So I also want to write another line of code that demonstrates a, a, how to use a variable within QTP. So I'm going to create a variable called exist. So I'm basically going to check to see if it exists. I'm going to wait a second. So the exist uh, property basically checks whether an object currently exists uh, or not. So it's going to return a value of either true or false. And I'm just going to display the return value. And so we see it does return the value of true. In this, so in this line of code, does exist is a variable. And so a variable basically all it does is it stores data. Uh, we'll go into more detail in variables in a later video, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what a variable is and how to use it within QTP. So a few things to keep in mind is uh, anytime you're dealing with code in QTP, if there's any any function, any uh, object, or any uh, property or method that you don't understand, all you need to do is highlight it and hit the F1 key. And so the F1 key will launch context-sensitive helps. So if you highlighted, say, type, and you click the F1 key, it automatically brings up the type method with all the information about it. And so uh, a lot of times it'll give the, what the syntax is, uh, a bunch of details, what are valid arguments for this particular property or method. And it also usually gives examples. VB script is not case sensitive. So we could type does exist any way we want and it's still gonna recognize recognize that variable. So just to prove it, let's run it and see what happens. And you can see it still works. Uh, another good practice to get into is adding comments to your code. So comments basically are messages placed out throughout your test script that explains, you know, basically what, what is going on. So in order to create a comment with in QTP, you can use the apostrophe and then type in your comment. This is a comment. Or you can use the word rem and type in this is a comment. You can use either way, but what I would do is I would pick one and stick with it just to be consistent. And so this brings us to our last uh, last quick good practice, and that is white space. And so white space is basically a collection of spaces and blank lines that you find in your test scripts. And QTP ignores white space, but it's as important as comments to make your scripts readable. So if you have a script that's packed with uh, without lines, comments, or indentation, you'll see that it's really hard to read. So uh, let's take a quick look. So here's a quick example of what, kind of like the white space tabbing uh, rules that I follow when creating a script. So if we compare this to a script that doesn't have white space or indentation, so notice how hard it is to read. So if it's hard to read, then it's gonna be hard to maintain. Cool. So in this first video, we covered some key terminology and some basic concepts that we're going to need to get started learning uh, VBScript and QTP. So stay tuned for more videos in my series, Learning to Program in QTP. Mm -hmm.